Hi, welcome to our next segment. This is part two of our video on realism and impressionism. Um, we are going to be focusing on the art movement of impressionism. Impressionism is both a style and name of a group of artists who did something very radical in 1874. They banded together and held their own independent exhibition. These artists described in fleeting sensations of light the new leisure pastimes of the city and its suburbs. It's hard to imagine, but at this time in France, the only place of consequence that artists could exhibit their work was the official government-sanctioned exhibitions called salons, held just once a year and controlled by a very conservative jury. The Impressionists painted modern Paris and landscapes with a loose, open brushwork, bright colors, and unconventional compositions, none of which were appreciated by the salon jury. These artists we know today as Impressionists, and you've probably heard some of these names, Claude Monet, Auguste Renoir, Edward Degas, um, and there's tons of others, um, could not afford to wait for France to accept their work. They all had experienced rejection by the salon jury in recent years and felt that they were waiting there, that waiting an entire year before between exhibitions was too long. They needed to show their work and they wanted to sell it. These artists pulled their money together and rented a studio that belonged to the photographer Nadar, who we encountered in our segment on realism, and set a date um, for their first collective exhibition. They called themselves the Anonymous Society of Painters, Sculptors, and Printmakers, and their first show opened at about the same time as the annual salon in May 1874. The Impressionists held eight exhibitions from 1874 through 1886. And here are some examples, Claude Monet um, with his um, Sunrise, and then Edward Degas, who was um, very famous for painting um, ballerinas and performers. So if we go back to neoclassical and romantic artists, um, their paintings had more of a finished appearance. The Impressionists' um, completed works looked like sketches. They had a very fast and sort of preliminary um, appeal to them, um, and they were termed impressions that the artists would dash off to preserve an idea of what to paint more carefully at a later date. So they, they would actually go out into the outdoors, which was also a movement called plein air, which is a French term of, you know, being outdoors. And um, they would sort of make these sketches, and then they would bring them back to their studio. Um, Normally, an artist's impressions were not meant to be sold, but they were meant to be aids for memory, to take these ideas back to the studio for the masterpiece on canvas. The critics thought it was absurd to sell paintings that looked like slapdash impress impressions and to present these paintings as finished work. So they really did have an issue with the sort of the loose um, brushwork um, and quality of some of these paintings, and they thought they were just mere impressions and, and weren't finished works and, and therefore shouldn't be sold. And here we have an, an image of Renoir um, and then um, Berthe Morissot, um, who was a female um, Impressionist artist. We're going to focus on some of the works of Claude Monet um, in this particular segment. Um, in their landscapes and genre scenes, the Impressionists tried to arrest a particular moment in time by pinpointing specific atmospheric conditions, light flickering on water, moving clouds, and a burst of rain. Um, their techniques tried to capture what they saw. They painted small, um, very kind of little commas of pure color, one next to each other. Um, when viewers stood at a reasonable distance, their eyes would see a mix of individual colors, colors that had blended optically. Um, this method created more vibrant colors than colors mixed as physical paint on a palette. In the 1880s, the Impressionists accepted their, the name the critics gave them, though their reception in France did not improve quickly. Other artists, such as Mary Cassatt, who were, whose work we are going to be looking at, she was an American, recognized the value of the Impressionist movement um, and were invited to join. American and other non-French collectors purchased numerous works by the Impressionists. So today, a, a large share of Impressionist work remains outside of um, French collections. 
So one of the earlier masterpieces of Impressionism, um, this is entitled On the Bank of the Seine um, by Claude Monet, depicts the artist's future wife, Camille, sitting near the River Seine. Monet began this painting while he and Camille and their new son, Jean, were staying at an inn near the village. Um, um, I can't pronounce the name, <laughs> B-O-N-N-I-E-R-E-S, Sur Cien, so it was a village near the Seine River, um, during the early phase in his career. The artist was struggling financially, unable to pay. Um, he and his family were forced to leave the inn after several weeks. Although he was discouraged by the unfavorable response to his work, young Monet was, one of the, was on the verge of uh, a very um, successful artist breakthrough and very unprecedented um, breakthrough. So here's a detail zooming in on Monet's painting, and you really do get a, a sense of this incredible, loose, and very rough um, uh, brushwork. Um, so Monet depicted Camille enjoying a glorious day looking across the river um, from the town that they lived in. Um, the smooth water of the Seine reflects the inn, where the couple um, was staying. So you can see that over here. Um, the rowboat painted in the foreground transported them to and from the inn. Um, among the greatest of Monet's oil sketches on the bank of the Seine um, reveals the early hallmarks of an Impressionism. So a commonplace subject, an open air setting in the countryside near Paris, um, broken, vibrating brushstrokes that depict the the fluctuations of light and the reflection of light, and a high-keyed palette, which, you know, high-key means these sort of bright um, light colors of rapidly applied blues, greens, and yellows. And, and the forms, um, again, really do evoke this sense of immediacy um, in, in the application of the paint. So this is another painting done by Monet. Um, this one is different than some of his other um, landscape paintings because the subject is more of an urban landscape. Um, and Monet painted um, the Saint um, Lazare station. Um, Monet had just left um, uh, another town um, to settle in Paris, so he had sort of left the suburbs of Paris to actually settle into the urban city of Paris. Um, after several years of painting in the countryside, he turned to urban landscapes. At a time when um, critics um, such as Zola um, exhorted artists to paint their own times, Monet tried to diversify his source of inspiration and longed to be considered like Manet, Degas, and other painters um, during this time, a painter of modern life. Monet asked for permission to work at the station of Lazare, um, and um, this became a very ideal setting um, for someone, an artist, who sought to observe the changing effects of light, movement, clouds of steam, and these radically modern motifs. Again, we're in the time of the um, Industrial Revolution, and so transportation, the steam engine, all of these things were, you know, these, you know, these areas of, of progress that were just moving very quickly. If you hear somebody licking water, that's my dog, Chi Chi. Um, I'm sorry, they're very noisy sometimes. Um, from, from this um, location followed a series of paintings um, with different viewpoints of the station, including views of the vast hall inside. Um, in spite of the apparent geometry of the metallic frame, what prevails here is really the effect of color and light um, and the reflection of that, and, rather than a concern for describing machines or travelers in detail. So again, it's this, um, this observation of light and these sort of atmospheric um, phenomenon, whether um, that impressionists were interested in. Certain zones, um, true pieces of pure painting, really do almost achieve a very abstract quality and vision as well. And here's an example of what the interior of the station looks like today. Um, it's one of six large terminal railway stations of Paris. It is the second busiest station in Paris after the 
uh, Gare du Nord. Um, it handles about 275,000 passengers each day. Um, the station was designed by an architect, um, Just Leach and um, Matre de Louvier. <laughs> the general contractor was Eugene Flaché. Um, so, you know, again, this probably in, in its time was also, you know, in terms of architecture, was considered a work of art as well. And here are some sort of comparisons um, with Monet's painting and then um, different viewpoints of the station. Um, the station of St. Lazare um, has been represented in a number of artworks. It attracted artists during the Impressionist period, and, and many of them did live very close um, to the station during the 1870s and 1880s. Um, Manet lived very close um, to the station. Um, two years after moving to the area, he showed his painting, The Railway, also known as Gare Saint Lazare, at the Paris Station in 1874. I'm sorry, the Paris Salon in 1874, painted from the backyard of a friend's house on the nearby, um, on a nearby road. Um, and this painting is located in the National Gallery of Art. Portrays a woman with a small dog and a book as she sits facing us in front of an iron fence. A young girl to her left views the railway track and the steam beyond it. At the time of its first exhibition, it was um, it was made fun of and, and the subject of ridicule. Um, I love this picture, and that's why I included it. And I think most of you who know me know that I love dogs, and so I just love um, this scene and this depiction of 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 this, you know, obviously a mother and child and the little dog, and and you know, it's very picturesque. But then you do have this sort of urban element in the background with the steam. Um, and it, it just, you know, it really does make me think of what Paris um, was like during that time. Getting back to Monet's um, depiction of a train station, it, it really is a, a, a very sophisticated composition, a comp composition in which hard-edged disks of the railroad signals hover above a rapidly scribble squirrel of blue and rose clouds um, of steam, which scrolled um, white edges with scrolled white edges, um, while the sketchy angular drawing of the tracks in the building provide this contrast. So here you have these sort of beautiful swirls of clouds, and then you also have the rectilinear, um, you know, geometry of the of the structure itself. And so it really does provide this um, juxtaposition and, um, and comparison of um, these curvilinear sort of rectilinear forms. Um, the flat, opaque circle of the largest signal placed dead center um, is quickly uh, and, and thickly painted. Um, and again, it, you know, it, it really has this very abstract quality to it. And the paint application is very thick um, as well. Um, and you really get a, a sense of um, that sort of impasto technique um, that he was using. <sighs> Sorry about that. Here's a detail. Um, be quiet! Here's a, a detail of Monet's painting, and you really do get an appreciation of the paint application. Um, the painting was shown at the third um, Impressionist exhibition, and again, it was very different than Monet's previous paintings of harbors, boats, and ocean views um, that viewers had seen before. The station at um, Lazar you know, again, was also a series of paintings. Um, and and that's something an artist hadn't done before as well, like creating a series of, of paintings that related to each other. And the series led the viewers through a tour of the train station at different points of the day. And again, this really shows how Monet exemplified this idea of modern life and its chaos and instability. Um, so on. And here there are other images from the series. Again, Monet's work of the train station, again, is unparalleled in its, um, in its representation of steam and this sort of smoke-filled sta station. In spite of the Impressionist style, the work produces accurately the typography of the area, 
even allowing one to deduce the precise point um, where the artist was standing while painting. And again, this is the first time an artist had showed a single theme through a series of variations. And so these are some of the other images from that series. And, and they're really, when you see them all together, they, they really are quite beautiful and really give you a sense of what it must have been like. That sort of, you know, not what it looked like, but the feeling of what it must have been like to to be at that train station in Paris in the late um, 19th century. Monet did other um, series as well. This is one he did of the Rouen Cathedral paintings. Um, there are 30 of, of these in all, and these were made between 1892 and 1893. Um, he did rework these um, in his studio in 1894. Um, Monet rented space across the street from the cathedral where he set up temporary studios um, for this purpose. And here are some other examples of um, variations that he did of the cathedral. Um, in 1895, he selected what he considered to be the 20 best paintings from the series for display at his Paris dealer's gallery. And of these, he sold eight before the exhibition was over. When Monet painted the cathedral series, he had a long, he had long since been impressed with the way light imparts to a subject a distinctly different character at different times of the day and the year, and as atmospheric conditions change. And this is something that I do talk about if you've ever taken my photography class, um, where you know at different times of the day, light really changes the way things look depending on how the the sun moves across the sky. So in the morning. Um, the light is softer, more diffused. There are sort of more of these, um, you know, as the sun rises, it's kind of reddish golden tone. And then as the sun, you know, becomes, um, you know, moves across the sky in like the late afternoon, it's, it's very contrasty lighting. There's lots of shadows. And then, you know, obviously as the sun sets in twilight, there's a bluish tint. Um, so it, it really does change the quality. Um, and that's what I think the important part of remembering what Impressionism is about is this, it's not that they were trying to paint the cathedral, but they were trying to paint, you know, the way it looked and the way light is um, affecting how it looks. And that's what we really are observing, the way light um, reflects off objects. And so things look very different to us depending on the time of day and, and the weather. Um, and, and it, but obviously this is very difficult. Um, for Monet, the effects of light on the subject became as important as the subject itself. Um, his series paintings, in which he painted many views of the same sub subject under different lighting conditions, are an attempt to illustrate the importance of light in our perception of a subject at a given time and place. By focusing on the same subject through a whole series of paintings, Monet was able to concentrate on recording visual sensations themselves. These subjects did not change, but the visual sensations due to the changing conditions of light did, and that's what he was trying to record. Monet found that the thing he had set out to paint, this idea of light and the reflection of it, um, was very difficult to paint and capture because of its ever-changing nature um, and, it, it, and the sort of extreme, sort of subtle changes it imposed on um, its subject. Um, and it was almost an impossible thing to capture. Um, he was assisted, however, by his ability to capture the essence of a scene quickly, again, by, you know, you know, kind of getting these um, impressions down quickly. And then he would finish it later using a sketch combined with his memory of the scene. And here, zooming in, you can really see how he did use these sort of thick layers of richly textured paint. And again, this, this application of the paint really gives it an expressive um, quality of the subject as well. Um, the subtle interweaving of color, the keen perception of the artist and the use of um, texture all serve to create a series of shimmering images in light and color. And, and again, you know, these, you know, today, I mean, that's, I think, why people are so in love with these images, you know, because they really are very modern and have sort of held the, the test of time. Um, so, 
my dog just snorted. Um, so this in concludes our segment on Monet. I'm going to stop here. The Impressionist is a is a, a longer unit. So I, instead of like, I'm going to try to do it by artist as opposed to just, you know, doing the whole movement of Impressionism. So stay tuned for part three. We're going to be looking at the American artist, Mary Cassatt.